a bitter lesson. Royal for Harry and Meghan. No more trust. It's a scary contrast. William and Catherine gave Meghan and Harry a bitter lesson in trust. You could clearly see there was no goodwill there. When the two brothers and their wives were photographed together outside of Windsor Castle, it looked incredibly awkward and quite strained as well. Clearly, it was just a symbolic gesture to show how much they respected the Queen. The look on Meghan's face in that photo, as she's looking across as somebody who one day will be Queen Consort, is absolutely priceless. Now, clearly Catherine doesn't have any time for her. I think Meghan was scared and she was clearly feeling very uncomfortable when she was around William and Catherine. I guess it's pretty easy for Meghan to lob those grenades all the way from the US, but when she's in the UK, clearly things are different. See, when Meghan's in the US on her home territory, she acts like she's all big and brave. But obviously her being so close to William and Catherine left her feeling very uncomfortable. She was trying to hide her face, and she was trying to hide behind Harry. So obviously Meghan isn't quite as brave as she lets on. I can't help but wonder, why didn't Meghan go out there standing tall and confident, just like Catherine did? And I don't think it was an act on Meghan's part. You don't need to be a body language expert to understand Meghan. It's clear that she's only brave in the US, where she can just hide out in her own McMansion. I think Meghan was positively terrified to have the face of family, the country, and the people that she told so many lies about for two years, and it was under the most emotional of circumstances to boot. And then Meghan had to do that after her podcast had begun and after the interview that she did in the cut. I think that's a pretty hefty dose of karma, and I was happy to see it. I'm sure Meghan simply cannot wait to return to California. Over the past three years, the royals had to watch on as the queen became weak and frail. She had a lot to deal with in these three years. The strain of the endless taunting from Meghan really took its toll. And that's exactly why many people have come to the conclusion that Meghan actually speed up the death of the much-beloved queen. Now Meghan is in the UK right now, but they told her she could not go with Harry to Balmoral. She was not welcome there. The palace has to accept that William only agreed to be seen with Harry and Meghan because the two of them had threatened to do their own royal walkabout. They said they were going to bring a film crew along with them while they went out and met with the crowds, and it looked like Meghan wanted Spotify and Netflix to see them comforting the people who were so overcome with grief at the loss of the Queen. I guess she said something like, oh, Harry, we've got to go out and be filmed offering comfort to those poor people who are mourning over the beloved Queen. And you know what? Take your time. Go slow. When you hug that old woman who's crying. We want to make sure that the cameras get the shot and make that hug last as long as you possibly can. And while you're at it, shed some tears too, if you can. I mean, that one image by itself could earn us so much money. But unfortunately for Meghan, Harry is still a member of the family. His father confirmed as much and when I watched the broadcast again, I noticed that King Charles and speaking about Harry and Meghan used only their first names. So Harry was referred to as Harry. Then the new estates and the title of Prince of Wales were added to his existing titles. And Harry got the same level of familiarity, but we didn't hear anything about titles. He's not carrying out any duties for the monarchy, and he's also mentioned as living overseas. So it made me curious about whether or not Harry plans to stay in the US. And if he remains in the US forever, is it because he really wants to be there, or has he been pretty much exiled? So the fact that King Charles chose to include the word overseas could just be a reference to Harry's previously stated preferences. Or could it be a sign that he's no longer seen as a close family member? He is no longer being relied on to help the king carry out his duties. If we think back to the earlier part of the speech, the king did talk a little bit about the changes of duty that he had to embrace. Now, he did use his charity work as an example of a change, but other changes were not excluded either. The first message focused on commitment to maintaining the monarchy, just like his mother did, and he also talked about the happier news about his son and heir, William. Harry was mentioned as a family member, but he wasn't going to be dedicated to the monarchy. As the king carried out his work, that much was clear. It's obvious that Harry will not be helping. And of course, Harry and Meghan are not welcome on the grounds of the palace without prior permission as well as a notice to royal security.
Let's remember that it was Meghan who accused the whole royal family of being racist, and thanks to her, Prince William was heckled. Thanks to Meghan's words and behavior, there was a real security risk that was created for William and the royal family as well. William was busy with official royal duties, and he was heckled about being a racist. Harry and Meghan have made it clear that they are not friends of the monarchy. No. Before Harry got married to Meghan, he didn't need an invitation to come on palace grounds. Perhaps he can still go to Frogmore if the lease is current, but that's pretty much it. And they did move their things out of Frogmore too. I'm sure that King Charles has issued a list to the family of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable to wear in court mourning. And I'm sure at the top of that list is that women do have to wear pantyhose, which would have been for Meghan's sake, and not anybody else, because nobody else has this problem of always wanting to show their bare legs. All the other women in the royal family know what's appropriate, and they're not so obsessed with trying to show off their bodies. And it looks like maybe for the first time ever, we're beginning to see Harry try to keep Meghan in line. We saw a bit of Harry guiding Meghan instead of the other way around. On the evening after the Queen's death at Balmoral, all of the senior royals were present. Decisions were made, and it was stated that Harry would be building his life overseas with Meghan. They made it clear that thanks to everything Harry and Meghan have done, they are not welcome to rejoin the family in the UK. And if King Charles gives his son any handouts in the future. If he makes any kind of notable generous gestures, then he and Camilla are gonna decide together based upon how Meghan and Harry have acted going forward. There cannot be any more threats, no more lies. And whatever their books contain, the publishers have been put on notice that the new Prince and Princess of Wales are William and Catherine, so Harry and Meghan can no longer manipulate the narrative surrounding his father and his deceased mother. We know that we can rely on William, the new Prince of Wales, to keep the King, his father and Camilla his consort, as well as his household safe. Prince William will work hard to honor his beloved late grandmother and his late mother too. He's gonna do his duty well. And there are rumors circulating that Catherine served as the peacemaker between William and Harry. Let's remember that it was her at Prince Philip's funeral who tried to get them talking now as spectators. Of course, we don't know what the family said privately, and we also can't be sure of exactly what the effect was of Meghan and Harry's behavior on an already aging and frail monarch. But I suspect that William and Charles are not gonna be as accommodating as the Queen was. Catherine could have been the peacemaker once again, but her children had been so viciously attacked by Meghan, so it could be a time when they find the chickens finally come home to roost. In other news, I'm happy to see that Catherine, the Princess of Wales, is following by the rules that the late Queen put in place when it comes to engagement. Even though she didn't have it secured, she did brush her hair back so that her face could be clearly seen and I can't help but wonder, if she had enough time, would she have put her hair up so that we could clearly see her whole face? It was obvious watching the footage that she was being 100% authentic. She was grieving with the rest of us. She's gonna be such a strong support system for William in the coming days and also to the king in the coming months and years ahead. And you, do you agree with this view? Please tell me what you think below in the comment section. If you think my video is helpful, please remember to like and share video. And don't forget to follow page now. Thank you.